Today, I've got a very special video podcast with Costify, a young entrepreneur on the rise who already has a tremendous amount of success dropshipping. So get ready for this inspiring discussion where we are going to be going over how a 16-year-old is able to start a dropshipping business from scratch today and still be able to succeed at it. And we're going to be going over how he finds these winning products. And he's even going to share some of them and show it to us in this video podcast, as well as the supply that he works with, how he even came up to the dropshipping business model in the first place, all of the obstacles that he had to face and how he overcame them, and so much more that I do not want to spoil right from the beginning. So let's waste no more time and jump into our video podcast with Costify. Costify, thank you very much for being here today. First of all, how are you today? Thanks for having me, bro. I'm doing good. Just recorded some videos, editing, you know, the usual stuff for TikTok organic, not special. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Can you first tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually got started with dropshipping at such a young age? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> yeah, no I don't worries. know why. So first of all, thanks for having me, bro. Um, So a little bit about myself. I'm doing TikTok organic dropshipping. It's when you like order the product to your house and then just make TikToks, shorts, reels, everything with it. And you post them yourself and then get organic views without like paying for advertisements and then you get organic traffic straight to your website and people convert that way so like it's a very low barrier to entry and like and a lot of people are getting into that right now because it's super lucrative i've been doing that since um february 2023 i started doing drop shipping in august 2022 and i was first doing paid advertisements i lost a bunch of money there um, my first video on my YouTube channel was actually my first ever dropshipping store. Like I documented it from the first ever store. And in that video, I lost over like five or 600 bucks just in ads alone. And there were other expenses like super down. And there was like all my savings, all the money that I had. I even like went in debt to my parents a little bit for my first mm -hmm. ever store. So that didn't work. I did paid advertisement for like, like a half a year. And then in February, 2023, I started to get into organic dropshipping. I saw Mike Gans videos and he had like 2K followers, maybe less at the time. I got super inspired by that. And so I just ordered my first product. I mean, I did some, a little bit of research. I recorded that, that product as well. I think the first one flopped completely. I was just getting zero views and I mean, I was shadow banned. I used some sneaky strategy to get to the U S market because I'm outside of the U S like I was uh, trying to use an emulator on my computer and con connect it to a VPN. Like it was super shady stuff and nothing really yeah. worked, obviously. But then the second product, I started targeting the country that I live in instead of targeting the US. And that kind of worked because I um, didn't have the, tr the problems with algorithm anymore because I wasn't targeting the US with some shady method. Mm -hmm. That product um, went kind of semi-viral. Like for this country, it's kind of viral. And I, I made some of my first sales there with that product. I mean, I was negative in the end. I didn't calculate the margins correctly. I'm a dumbass, but it was mm. still some first sales and it really inspired me and propelled my, like, you know, my motivation. And I really started to want to do it more because I saw that it's possible, like after getting some first sales and then I launched my third product, I think, or maybe a couple more in between, I don't remember. And like that product actually started to be, it was profitable. It was actually it's right here is these little ripster things it's like what is that it's like a gripster you put it on your hand like there's a little band like this oh there it is the whole thing it's like you put it on your hand like and it's for training your forearms basically hmm. pumping out the the veins and everything and so that product did pretty well it got me to like i don't know it made over uh 10 15 maybe 20k in revenue dollars and that was pretty pretty good at the time I mean, it was my first ever like i don't i don't know if i can call it a winning a winning product but i guess for for that time like bro it's like the first online money that i've ever seen is like i felt on top of the world bro like yeah crazy yeah. like rich bro i was 15 i think i was just balling bro getting like 100 not 100 but like you know over 20 orders per day at a certain time on time like it felt absolutely insane, like on top of the world. But then, yeah, after that product, I started to get into other stuff as well. So it was like summer 2023 already. I, I tested a bunch of other products. Um, some of them did fairly well. Like I got a few sales here and there. 
but like nothing any like even close to this even not remotely close um but oh, so yeah. then i kept testing stuff and i then started to like kind of get distracted a little bit because this didn't work like i tested more and more products but nothing really worked for me like throughout the whole summer like i said i didn't find any even remotely close like winners to this one and then i started to get into like a little bit of like in paid advertisements in like 2023 uh then i kind of started to pivot towards like tiktok shop in autumn then like uh even affiliate marketing a little bit just like some weird stuff and then in fall 2023 i met my mentor and he told me to to keep doing tiktok organic drop stream because that's like i already have seen some success with it and that's like the thing that i need to focus on instead of jumping from strategy to strategy and so i kept doing that i tested a shit ton of products from fall to like 2024 and then in january i started or in december i don't know i started testing a product that's like made me a lot of money and is still actually bringing in some sales and that product is, I mean, the fidget guns, like, you know, the plastic fidget gun, you know. Yeah, and yeah. so um, a few videos went viral, I think, in February organic. or March. Yeah, complete organic still. And um, yeah, so it, it made me over like, I don't know, I wanted to pull up dashboard real quick. But anyway, it's like uh, 52,000 revenue, I think. So it's like a pretty good margins as well. I mean, like yeah. 25K, probably 20 maybe because I, like I'm outsourcing some stuff with creators. Maybe like 20, 25 is profit. I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to like lie here, guess specific, but I think it's it's decent profit margins because it's, you know, no paid advertisements, just all organic. So yeah, that product still doing kind of well. After that, I tested a bunch of more products. Some of them did fairly well. I had a creator go viral recently with a product. And I mean, it wasn't like anything super good, but it was like, I don't know, like 4K in revenue probably like within the past few weeks. Um, but yeah, so like a little a little bit of everything here and there, just testing products, trying to find the next winner right now and, uh, and doing the creator stuff. So they're like making content for other products and hopefully one of them is going to go viral as well. Okay, well, you just gave me one of the most uh specific, like l longest answers for a very uh for the first question and you already like answered many questions that i have up ahead but you also uh, gave me ideas for I'm sorry uh, i didn't want to kill the retention rate. it's great it's even better this way so oh. um what i like first is that most drop shippers most people who, who try drop shipping usually stop after they don't see success in the beginning and most don't see success in the beginning that's just how it is if it was so easy to succeed at day one or at week one or at month one it would be easy and everybody would be able to do it but once yeah. you're actually able to um uh you know overcome the first few main obstacles that most just give up and this is uh, i'm talking mainly about you running paid ads and spending a whole bunch of money um, money that's yours or or your parents, whatever. It doesn't feel good to be yeah. losing money, especially when you know you don't see anything that's coming out of it. And this is where most people would just stop and think, okay, this isn't working, or this is dead, or this just isn't, you know, probably maybe isn't for me. And you didn't give up. You just kept hanging in there. What was that thing that kept you hanging in there and not give up after you lost some money? Honestly, I just didn't see anything else that I could do. Like I couldn't envision myself doing anything else. Like I just, I don't know. I knew that I'm too far off to like keep studying and get a degree and stuff like that because mm -hmm. I kind of, I don't know. I'm not really interested in that to be honest. Like it's, I can I do you. that. I know that I can. I used to be like a straight A student to like eighth grade, but mm -hmm. then I just stopped because I realized it's just not interesting. And I think, I mean, honestly, I don't know. I haven't really thought about what's just keeping me going, but so for, like right now is just, my it's just become my identity to be honest like i just wake up and i know that i'm the guy that like doing is doing tiktok organic and managing people i'm not the guy that's like studying and preparing to get a degree and i'm not saying there's yep. anything wrong with it not at all like nope. uh, i completely respect those people but like for me i just i just don't think it's i don't know i just don't think it's something that i want to do i mean at this yep. point yep. i just yep. like doing this and that's what keeps me going and I, at the I point really like where, how like, you super low yep. yeah yeah and like, I know that I've seen some success already. So I know that it's possible for a fact. So like, even when I'm like super down low, I know that I can get out of that and that I will get out of that situation, whatever it is, because I've seen that it's possible, you know? Yep. Yep. I really like how you stayed motivated because I really think that that's what 
obviously, you know, brought you to uh, where you are today instead of just losing that motivation. I think that's great. And also that you started at such a young age, which I think is, uh, it's, it's really inspiring for many people who are just interested in getting started and thinking is today, like, can we still start today? Or is it like a thing of the past? Because like for me personally, I started seven years ago and I was 32 at the time. So I did not start at a very young age. I'm an, I'm an, I'm an old timer now. Uh, and I think that it's really, uh, again, inspiring to see that young people are able to uh, do it and start, which will circle me back to this question. Have you ever faced any, like, were you ever kind of skeptic about it or having doubts because of your age, like starting so young? Did you ever think maybe I'm, you know, the, I'm, I'm not at the age yet? Or like, did you know that this could become a thing uh, even at your age? Honestly, I didn't think about it at all. Like I just saw like Sebastian George Ruby has online Mikey. I mean, Mikey again wasn't posting, I think back then, but like right. I just saw people and just decided to try it. I didn't even think about anything. And then that obviously there were problems. Like it, it was difficult to like get the payment providers to set everything up, but right. I managed to do all that. So right. I didn't really and, think about it. Uh, would you say that it's mostly self-taught or like without learning from uh, someone or something like it wouldn't be possible. Like, how do you see that? Like, because in the beginning you were kind of like teaching yourself, right? You weren't like following a mentor or something. And then you mentioned how after running like a few times, uh, running ads a few times and it didn't work and then you moved to organic. So at one point did you stop being uh, self-taught and move to like learning from someone? And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll follow up more questions from there. It's getting interesting. <laughs> I mean, I was always learning from someone. It's just YouTube. Like 90% right. of the stuff I learned about drop streams all from the internet, obviously, like and YouTube specifically. Like it's it's such a insane opportunity. Like today you can just go to YouTube and like I know everybody's saying it's super corny, but like it's literally the truth. Like I learned everything I know right now from YouTube pretty much. And a little bit obviously from my current mentors. Not a little bit, quite a lot of stuff, but like before like my first ever like semi winning product like i said i taught everything i learned everything from youtube pretty much everything i knew by then was purely from the internet i never had a mentor like before the current one and so yeah i mean to answer your question mm -hmm. um i think i can't really i didn't really learn myself because it's just i mean i think what you're trying to say is like from the experience alone obviously i learned a lot from experience but like mainly it came from the internet i think and everyone can do as the same thing. Buy right. my course, think of the description. <laughs> no, just kidding. Right. So no, you, you just, you, you open up like a whole bunch of content on YouTube. You found the right people who are actually able to teach it pretty well and you learn from them. And then you kind of uh, blended it in with your own. You had success on your first product. And then from there, you uh, pretty much took it off and scaled, which is something that I'm going to also get to soon. Are there any other challenges that um, come up to your mind that you had in the beginning when you were getting started and you were, you know, still overcoming obstacles after trying and failing with paid ads and then moving to organic. What other uh, challenges like come up to your mind that you had to face and how, how you of course overcame them as well? I mean, to start off, I want to say that I didn't like just pull up a bunch of videos and I, I want to learn dropshipping. I didn't do that. I just mm -hmm. was kind of interested in that. So whenever I had a free minute, I was just watching videos about dropshipping. Like I said, like Sebastian George Ruby has a, mm -hmm. and uh, it just wasn't something that I just sat down and learned. I mean, obviously it went like that, but like by an accident because I was just interested in it, not because I like wanted to learn it. Mm -hmm. And um, and to answer your question about the challenges, I mean, the, like I said, there were a bunch of stuff due to me being under 18. Like when I was starting, um, I, I couldn't get a payment provider. I didn't have a mm. bank account. I didn't have nothing. I don't have anything yet, I think. Everything is like registered for my parents. I have nothing on paper. And so it was kind of challenging because I had to convince them that it actually works. At first, like my father especially, he was like super against it. He didn't. He thought the dropshipping is like, it ain't going to work but i just kind of pushed through it and so yeah i mean there was a, sh a lot of challenges and like not going viral for example again like zero views on my first organic account i just didn't know what's wrong i researched it um and i couldn't find anything and then i just instead of trying to target the united states i just targeted the country that i live in instead and that kind of worked and like everybody's targeting the us but i just s s thought about something different and i found a work around that way you know yeah you went local and that started uh that's where it kind of took off from there that's really interesting yeah i didn't hear about like 
anyone doing that at the time. I just kind of figured it out. Not just like not to brag, but like just to say that there's always some way to to figure it out. Even if you think that there's no way you can like make videos and the algorithm really doesn't favor you, I think there's still a way to make it happen. And I think that's what I did. Like you just find a way to do it by your own. Doesn't there's right. doesn't have to be someone that already made the path for you. You can make the path. That's right. That's right. I completely, completely agree with you there. You talked about how you made, you know, when you, after overcoming all the obstacles and all the things that uh, you, you tried and felt in the beginning until you started seeing success with your first uh, winning product. And I do consider it a winning product for sure. First of all, when you described that feeling, it really took me back also like to the first sale. It's exactly the, the thing that you get where it's like, I just made money like online, like without anyone you know, no boss, no one telling me what to do, not working in an office and things like that. It was just an amazing feeling knowing that you can actually control the money coming in. And how did you actually start like to scale once you made your first few sales, right? And you're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to start like maximizing, you know, the numbers coming in. How are you actually able to move from, you know, making a first few sales to really scaling it up? I mean, here's the thing though, I didn't really do that. And I think it's a really a problem of mine because I just got comfortable with it. I didn't want to scale it. That's the thing. Like, I mean, at first I got a few sales and then I just kept posting. I just make it, made it kind of a habit, like sitting down, waking up and immediately getting to shoot content, spending like six hours to make four videos for the day or whatever, mm -hmm. seven, eight hours, whatever it took. Like I'm mm -hmm. talking like back in uh, spring, summer, 2023, whatever it was when I was running the first semi wearing product and like. Um, yeah, it was just a habitual kind of, I was just doing it because I'm doing it. Like I had like a streak of doing it every single day and I just did it out of habit. And in terms of like scaling with TikTok organic, it's pretty hard uh, to like consistently make money with it. And that's why I really lately I've just started to hate this business model to be honest, not to say that I'm quitting it, but like, it's just pretty much like bumps and dumps over and over again. You just find a winning product, you make some money with it, and then you just, it dies out and then you go on to the, the next, next one. one. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I really, really look forward to the day when I start like a brand or something, something more consistent that's like going to last and not just some pump and dump, like constantly stressing, like, is my product going to die soon? Oh no, I got, my sales are declining today. Maybe it's starting to die down. I need to start looking for something new, like, you know, right. that kind of stuff. Maybe I'm right. just a beginner. I don't know shit. Like there's a lot of people that are making a lot more money than me. Maybe just don't understand saying something about the business model, but like, I don't know, it's just kind of a little stressful and I don't think it's going to like, it's something that I want to do like forever, but, and then for scaling, I mean, that's the thing though. I, you can't really scale it. You can only scale it to a certain point with organic and then you kind of like just, right. just hit, hit the wall. Like you can scale obviously with creators, you can post more more volume, but sooner or later the product will die die down, like most likely, unless you get like into branding and white labeling and, and whatnot. But like, that's the thing. Like I scaled that product, I think to like pretty much the limit, like in this country. And then I just moved on to the next product that didn't work. The next one didn't work. Like a bunch more products didn't work. And then, like I said, in February of this year, I tested one of the products, like it was a completely different one and that just worked. And it, I didn't scale anything. It was just, it's pretty much, that's the thing. It's you're starting from zero every time. And like, I started from zero this time and it worked. And like now, I mean, you can scale, like I said, with the creators, but honestly, I don't think I've ever really like scaled anything after it's already gone vi viral with me. I kind of like just run it. And then when it starts to die down, I just kind of move on to the next product and maybe it's wrong, but that's the way I do it. No, that's, that's also one way to do it. And, um, a lot of people just do like people do different things with this. Some would consider, okay, if this was winning, then I will order some stock and then I can also, but then you're investing in inventory, not really dropshipping anymore. So some people use yeah. the dropshipping business model to test, and then they move to the hybrid model to, uh, order inventory and what's uh, working well for them yeah. and others, yeah, you know, just start a brand, like to, you said. Yeah. It's hard to scale without like getting into branding and white labeling, right. I think. Right, right, right. Um, okay. I have a juicy question. Uh, before I get to that, guys, I'm getting to know uh, Costify pretty well from this uh, podcast, uh, video podcast interview, but you can also get to know him as well. I will be leaving a link under this video to both his ex and to his uh, Instagram where you guys can also uh, connect with him on a more uh, personal level. And uh, Costify, can you explain a little bit of what they can uh, expect to find there? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't have like a program or anything, but I've been teaching some people for free and I just set you up with a product. I mean, the people that I work with and they just make content for me. And I basically just hop on calls with them weekly. They're always like in touch with me one-on-one -on -one WhatsApp. 
and I just tell them what to do. They test, they make content for me and then they get 25% commissions like of what they make. And I mean, I had a guy uh, get a page to like over 90,000 followers on YouTube recently. And so, and a bunch of other creators as well. So that's something I've been doing. So you can reach out to me and we can start working. Again, no upfront cost, no nothing. I can tell you, I sell you up with a product, everything. Link is right, going to be right below the YouTube video, guys. If you're listening to this podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or anywhere where you listen to your podcast, just hop over to our uh, YouTube channel at youtube.com slash autods and it'll be right below this video. Okay, so the next question that I would like to ask is what strategies do you use to find profitable products and reliable suppliers? So it's two different questions and this is something that a lot of people are having a hard time with and I'm sure that you also did in the beginning when you were just getting started. So finding products and reliable suppliers. How does that work? All right. So for, for products, I've just been doing the burner method, to be honest. It's just it's getting pretty tough lately because there's a lot of uh, dropshippers on TikTok. So you can like do product research on other platforms as well. But yeah, mainly it's just burner accounts. And then I just show the products that I found to my mentor and they kind of select the products that I need to test. And also I have, like I'm talking to a few people that are doing dropshipping as well, like on Discord. And like they're making a lot of money with it. And so they sometimes just share some products with me and that works as well. Like some one time a guy recommended a product to me um, on Discord and then I just posted a short with it, like a few shorts and then nothing went viral. And then in two weeks I checked back in and it's at like 6 million views. And then I got out to like over, wow. almost like 20 on shorts. And like it's just a product that someone recommended to me. I would have never found it probably other, any other way. But yeah, just burner account, AliExpress kind of decent, uh, like AliExpress method to research there. Then yeah, just burner accounts on all platforms. Instagram and TikTok is really good. Sh Shorts is pretty hard to do product research because you can't really set the algorithm to just show you products. Mm -hmm. But if you can, uh, like when you do scroll in Shorts, instead of watching Sigma male edits, just when you see a product, save the video and then can maybe it's a good product, but it's pretty rare that you find something good on, on Shorts. So yeah, mainly Instagram, right. TikTok, burner accounts. Okay. Are you still local? Are you still targeting uh, local, uh, you know, local uh, audiences or did you go more broad than that? Nah, I mean, I used to up until like winter or like mid winter. Uh, I mean, 2024, pretty much like up, up until 2024. And then this product popped off in the US and it was kind of like nice. a, a headache to, you know, make two videos, one for the US, one for the country that I live in, just in two different right. languages. And I don't even speak the language of the country that I live in. So mm. it's even more hard. So like, mm -hmm. I just, you know, and, and it's not even that profitable. I mean, I was getting some sales here and it's way easier to go viral in a smaller country than the U S because it's so saturated, right. but it's just not worth it really. Because if you get the same amount of views, like in the two countries, like in, you get a million in the U S and in the country that I live in or any other small country that's like not really used to e-commerce, like I'm not talking like UK or I don't know, Germany, those countries are performing really well in terms of conversion rate, but like just like other small countries, then you're just for a million views, you're going to get like five times less sales in the best case scenario, bro. Like I had a creator recently get like over 30 K subs on YouTube and, um, and he got like 10 million views or something, maybe a little less. I think it's over maybe like close to 50,000 right now on subs. And like, he only made like maybe five sales for like 10 oh, million views. Like, really? and he was targeting, um, I think Spain, but his videos went viral in like Spain, Mexico, like the Spanish countries. And it converted so bad that like, it's just not worth it. And I mean, obviously this is a super bad example. Like if you target some other countries, maybe it's going to be better, mm -hmm. but like just a quick example that, you know, that's why I switched to the U S because if it's just not worth the effort, you're just not going to get that many sales anyway. So right. I'd rather go viral one time in the U S than five times in an, any other country. In other even countries. It's easier. Yeah. yeah. Who's your go-to supplier today? I mean, I have uh, the same supplier I've been using since the Gripster days. I've been using it for like, working with them for like a year, a year and a, a, year and a half maybe. It's like a, a long time. And I mean, it's pretty good. Just some Chinese agency. And yeah, I just went to Alibaba and just searched for my product, contacted the supplier, and then they added me to a quick Skype group. And then, yeah, starting from there, just been working with them. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. 
Um, so we talk about uh, finding products which you use mainly for uh, networking with uh, other uh, drop shippers and um, kind of testing products around uh, uh, with each other, um, suppliers. Do you are you working today? Uh, and also, is is it different from the start? Are you on a one product store on a general store? How are you working today? Like, what type of store is it? I only do one product stores. Um, actually, uh, I do have a niche store that I'm running right now. But mainly, like when you're just starting out, I always do just one product stores. But yeah, so it's always when you start out, it's just starting from one product, and then when you go viral, maybe you add some other niche products like the fidget guns, for example, that store I'm still running and there's a bunch of variants, like over 10, maybe 15 or something like that. And yeah, so, but mainly if you're just starting out, there is no point in adding a, a, a lot of products. You just start with one and just focus on that, I think. I mean, depending on the marketing strategy you use, but for organic, it's just pretty hard to go viral with two different products at the same time. Maybe a niche store would be nice, but again, only after you like go viral, then you can like direct your first customers to that product as well like the new one that you just released but yeah for me it's just mainly one product stores okay and when it comes to marketing uh techniques and strategies so um as of course you've noticed today we have the power of organic marketing something that we didn't have a couple of years back and today you can really start with organic you don't have to put a budget from day one just post some tiktok videos um and you can also try it on uh, youtube shorts and uh, uh instagram and so forth and kind of test out the waters for free the, your only expense would pr pretty much be to order the product and ship it to your uh, location so yeah. that you can actually start sh uh, shooting some videos um when it comes to this actual uh, organic marketing and then of course you can find your winning product then you can decide if, hey if you have a budget and you made some sales and profit you can reinvest that back maybe into paid ads maybe maybe not depending on your decision but uh when it comes to organic marketing which is great today i've seen drop shippers making crazy amounts from just from organic yeah. and um can you give like some tips uh insights on like uh, of course it's not a black and white method it's not like hey if you do this the video is going to get uh, millions and millions of views but what are the patterns that you've noticed like for example uh having a strong hook or testing different hooks like what, what what's your like basic strategy when it comes to actually shooting a good organic video for the product it really depends on the product like i can't just tell you like a blueprint for every single product out there that would make you go viral but like right. to really sum it up to like in general there needs to be a great hook because if you don't hook the people in, nobody's even going to watch. It might be the best video in the world on second seven, but no one is even going to get there if you just don't hook them in. So it needs to have a great hook that it needs to be like overall smooth and pleasing to the eye throughout the video. And then, I mean, depending on the product again, but usually a controversy, like not a harmless, uh, a harmful one that's like going to distract people from the product, like some sort of controversy that will also like add to the video and make great people tip. like boost engagement that will like mm -hmm. make it go perform better. But yeah, just need good lighting, shoot on a iPhone, preferably like some just good quality and um, nice background related to the product. I mean, and a really good script. I mean, that's all it's, that's all it really is. Like the concept of the videos, I think by far the most important part, like if you have the best camera in the world, but the video is shit and the, the idea is bad, then you're just not going to go viral. But if it's the other way around, then there's a bunch of videos like with bad quality, but they have like millions of views because it's a good concept, you know? Yep. yep. Those are some great tips for, for really starting off with shooting some great. Do you use like a text to speech or like do you use your own voice or do you test out different methods? I mean, uh, it depends on the product, but like, for certain products, I do use like Eleven Labs, like to generate mm -hmm. AI speech. But for others, it's just text. I lately I just added in the TikTok editor, and it's pretty convenient. So yeah, I mean it really depends on the product and test out both. Right, interesting. What would you say is um uh, like the most or one of the most like memorable moments uh, from your journey that like really kind of stands out, or I don't know, maybe some funny thing or weird thing that happened um along the way. If anything pops like that into your mind. I mean, so the best point was probably when I was like sitting in school making my first sales in like early 2023 or like when I hit my first 1K day this year or something like that. Uh, and then a funny story would be, bro, there's a few, but like, so just to name a couple, or just, let's just talk about one. So, yeah, um, choose one. all right. So I was in school. It was like February, I think of this year and i was shooting for the fidget guns right? right and i was like i was really desperate to go viral like i had to or else like it's a it's a long story but long story short like 
uh, I would get kicked out of the program basically. And I, I had to like kind of go viral. I had to make some sales. I had to get some views. So I came up with an idea to take this product to school and take it out like right on a lesson. And, uh, and I, I talked about all that in my last video on YouTube, but yeah, so I took it out. I took it to school, like yeah. on a lesson and people studying its math classes, took it out like right in the lesson, uh, in the back seat, uh, showed the classroom with the product, shot the video, like everything good. I was like, I'm clear, bro. I just can chill out. So I, I usually just skipped all classes after like the first or second lesson because I didn't see any point in sitting there. Um, but like, don't tell my parents. <laughs> I hope anyway. they won't watch this uh, podcast. They yeah, most likely won't, though, right? So. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. But anyway, yeah, so I went away after, like, math classes was, like, the second lesson, and I hopped the fence of the school, and I decided to get some more clips because, like, like the video is not completed with just a school clip. It's not just the full video. I need to get some other clips of the product. It's so, like, there's a little uh, parking lot next to the school that I study in, and uh, I was shooting there, in the parking lot and the parking lot is surrounded by really tall buildings like residential buildings and i'm shooting there for like 10 minutes maybe 15 max like shooting got some a lot of clips i was actually packing up like ready to go up in a bus and go to my to my house which is actually like 10 kilometers away so it's like super far away my school and like and then a police car came by like somebody called the cops on me and they came to the parking lot and it was so cinematic, bro. It's like dark weather. It's just stopped raining. I'm shooting there alone. And the like police came over. Movie. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Exactly. And like they came over and they're like, I'm sitting there with a gun. <laughs> I pulled it up like behind my waist. I hit it. And uh, so like a police officer and his partner got out of the car and like approaching me. Like the first thing that the the driver, like the main guy said, the officer, he was, he said like, take out everything you got. And so I like, I, I knew exactly that I'm f So I like, I just took it out. I showed it to him. I mean, not just f because like it's, 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 I mean, it's, it's a toy gun. No, nothing can really happen for that, but you know, it's not the best situation in the country. And also, yeah. and also, uh, I'm supposed to be at school right now, but I'm skipping it. So I knew they would call the parents and tell about, they don't even know yet that I took it to school. I think still, it's been like half a year. And so they approached me. And I showed it to him. So like he understood that it's, uh, you know, that it's fake. And then he came and searched my backpack as well. There was another gun like that, like in the box. Um, but yeah, I just explained them that I, I was just shooting some videos. And then he asked me like, what the hell am I even doing here? Like, why am I doing it in a parking lot outside like here? And uh, I told him that I just really like this spot. I found it online and I came there by a bus. It's like a two hour drive to my school into that parking lot. And that I came specifically there just for that parking lot to film videos. And then they just kind of let me go with a warning. They said, if I, if I do it again, I'm going to get in trouble. But they didn't find out that I'm wow. I supposed I, to be at school. I wonder what your, heart cool. rate, what your heart rate was at that moment, at those well, moments. Probably over 200 <laughs> at least. Okay, so kids, don't try this at home. Stay at school. But that was a really nice story. Um, getting your heart rate up to 200 uh, BPM and having a nice little encounter with cops. I really like that. So... Costify, besides drop shipping, what other interests and hobbies do you have? I mean, uh, lately I've just been doing this and just, you know, here and there, just hanging out with my girlfriend. That's, that's about it. Just clocking in in the morning, working up until uh, lately, like not a lot, but like, I don't know, like 8 p.m. I mean, you never really stop working, but like just the deep work stuff. And then you just kind of get free after like 10 hours, 12 hours, and then you just... I don't know. I just watch some YouTube videos, documentaries, hang out with my girl. I and mean, that's, that's about it. Yeah, I used to like do a lot more stuff like skateboarding all the time, but lately I just don't really can't really find the time for that. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not trying hard enough, but I no, don't know. I just drop shipping. It sounds like you're just putting a lot of time into your professional life, which is the life of the, of an entrepreneur, or at least the start of it. That's, that's what it is. Uh, it sounds pretty, yeah. I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah. But like, it's in the beginning, like you're going to have to put in a lot of work to just get things going. Like in the beginning, I had no personal life talking, like in school, I was sitting alone, like not talking to people. I was, right. I mean, I, like I said, I was always skipping classes. And um, I, I didn't really care about any of that, any friends, like no, nothing. Like I understood early on this, like, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to be talking the to these term. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In five years from now and three years from now, like none, of, right. none of this is going to matter. And right. since I just moved schools, like recently, because I also moved countries, right. it's like, I don't really know any of these people anyway. So like, 
that's kind of like a unique situation because back in my hometown, obviously I had like a long time friends. I was like always hanging out here with, but like here, I uh, like, I don't really have any people that I can like spend time with. That's mm -hmm. that really allowed me to just kind of lock in and not have any distractions. Right. Just sit alone. And like, I didn't really miss out on anything because I didn't have any friends to hang out with. That's the thing. <laughs> To be honest, Sounds it's for the better. Depressing. It's it's for the better. I mean, I'm not yeah, saying having friends is bad, but uh, the 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 fact that you were able to think about that at again at such a young age and like thinking a few years forward and and knowing that you know for the long term it's not really gonna be beneficial to your uh, professional success and uh, just going all in uh, into your entrepreneurial yeah. uh, journey, but like and also staying motivated. It's not, I think that's like amazing. Yeah, yeah, but like it's not really like it sounds kind of cool, like Sigma Giga Chat Mail, but like. <laughs> Right. Now, like for real though, you just sit alone in the class. You think about what you're going to do when you come home. Like what videos am I going to make? Like you sit journal about the stuff you're going to do, like what you want, all that. You like not, you don't talk to people and it's like, you're really feeling lonely all the time. And I'm not saying that people got to do that, but I'm just saying like about talking about my experience. Like you don't, you don't really get to have fun. Like in the beginning, like at all, right. you just, you lock in and like, it sounds super good. Like now you, you like kind of semi made it like super fun but like actually it's not at all like that like you just really have to put in the work and focus on the the input and then it, you're gonna it get comes the with output. sacrifice it definitely comes with a, with a, a lot of yeah. sacrifice but i still think it's for True. the better and maybe not a lot of people can relate to it but i can completely relate to moving to different countries and starting new languages um when i was six and then again when i was 15 and it was like uh, again it kind of the same story with the loneliness and kind of no friends and but i did not have an entrepreneurial mindset back then for me it was go home and thinking about the next video game that i'm gonna play and mm. that's pretty much what it was uh for me but i can totally relate with you there like completely yeah how do you maintain today that balance i, I know that there's not much of a balance we did talk about uh, interests and hobbies between personal uh, and professional life but it kind of sounds like it's all kind of blended in today right so there's not much of like a balance between okay 50 percent personal life 50 percent professional life in the day-to-day -day, that's just not how it works right not at all but like there is certainly a type like a certain balance like it's not like completely 24 7 just work and nothing yeah. else like i don't really go out but you know like i said after the work day is done like kind of done like you know I, like i said i never really start working but like after the deep stuff is done you can just like my girlfriend can come over just hang out here and then you know just wake up and do the same stuff but like you never really are done so it's right. balance right. is not really balancing it's more mostly just like work taking the 70, edge 80 percent after a hard day yeah yeah yep. kind of okay uh before i go to the last question guys reminder the link to customize uh x and instagram is below this video on youtube if you're listening to this video podcast on spotify up apple podcast or once again wherever you listen to your podcast head over to our youtube channel at youtube.com slash auto ds Subscribe, of course, if this is the type of content that you like to see. And if you want to learn how to take the next step into your dropshipping journey, whether it's case studies, uh, uh, interviews, uh, dropshipping tips and strategies, what products to sell, how to start dropshipping on whatever selling channels in all kinds of uh, different suppliers. It's all there. Uh, academies and all of that is all included. So go ahead and uh, go to our YouTube channel, find this video and go to Costify's uh, X and Instagram links right below this video. Okay, Costify, final question. If you could go back into a time machine, not go back, if you could go into a time machine and then go back in time and start over, is there anything that you would do differently today? Honestly, no, nah, I'm really scared of the butterfly effect. Maybe if I would have done mm -hmm. something different, I would have been dead right now. You know, that's a good I'm one. alive. I'm completely healthy. Like my family members are alive. I'm pretty well off, like not well off, but like I'm not like I have a roof above my head. I'm not struggling. So I wouldn't really change anything because it might be for the worse. So I just only focus on the future and the present. Your mindset is totally in the right place, in my opinion. Uh, I like that you're mm -hmm. seeing things like that and you really you, you also know like what's most important like after everything and again really good answer i like that uh costify i really want to thank you for your time i think that a lot of people can get inspired and can uh, learn from uh, an young entrepreneur on the rise like you you're going to grow much bigger you have a lot of great opportunities you're going to go to good places i can see that happening i wish you the best of luck thank you for your time and i will definitely uh, see you later and we'll be in touch yes sir thanks for having me bro bye-bye